Hello, my name is Daniel Fernandez. I'm the owner of ScienceInHydroponics.com and today I will be doing a video where we will be discussing pH and in particular we will be talking about some important aspects of pH in hydroponics and the chemistry in hydroponics. Um, so let's start discussing the basic aspects of pH. So the basic, the basis of all these pH stuff is that water reacts with itself to form H3O plus and OH minus ions. These two ions are called hydronium and hydroxide. Now the key thing about this reaction, that water reacts with itself to form these two things, is that this also happens in the other direction. So whenever you have water present, you will always have this going on. Water is reacting with itself to form these two, and these two are reacting with themselves to form two molecules of water. Now, the interesting thing is that these reactions are both happening at exactly the same rate. And this is what we call a chemical equilibrium. The reactions are happening at the same rate in one direction and in the other. And when you measure the concentration of these two ions in pure water without any atmosphere, <laughs> you have that the concentration of this ion is 1 uh, times 10 to the power of minus 7 and the concentration of OH is the same. Molar. 1 times 10 to the power of minus 7 molar. Now, interestingly enough, what we have is that the product of these two concentrations, we denote concentration with these bars, is equal, is always equal at room temperature to 1 times 10 to the minus 14. So, pH is, to talk about pH, let's talk about what P is. So, P is just an operation that you carry out over anything. And the P of X is always equal to minus the logarithm of that X. So, when we're talking about pH, we are talking about minus the logarithm of the concentration of these hydronium ions. You can see that as pH, uh, pH goes from 0 to 14 because the product of these two things might, must always be equal to this at room temperature. So if this goes up, then this must go down. So this means that the value of pH, the, value, the, pos the possible values of this hydronium ion, um, it's bounded between 0 and the maximum value would be close to this value here, which we call Kw, which will be close to a 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Okay, so let's discuss what happens with strong acids and bases. What happens when you add a strong acid and what does it mean for an acid to be strong? So let's suppose we have a nitric acid solution that has a concentration of 0.1 molar and this is what we call a strong acid. But what is a strong acid? A strong acid is a substance that when you put it into water it reacts completely with it to form a hydronium plus whatever the conjugate base is, in this case it's nitrate. So this is not an equilibrium in the sense that all of this reacts and you form basically only these hydronium ions and nitrate. So what is the pH of the solution? Well, you the concentration of H0 plus will be equal to 
the concentration that we got from the from the um, from the nitric acid plus the concentration that we had in the water before, which is one times ten to the minus seven molar. Now this is a really really small number, so this is really approximately. Um, 0.001 molar and the pH of this is equal to minus the logarithm of 0.001 molar which would be equal to 3. So you can see that it's an acid. Why? Because it adds hydronium ions to water. Now what happens with a strong base? A strong base, let's talk about a strong base like KOH, what happens if we have a 0.001 molar solution of a strong base? Well, in this case, what we have, it's called a strong base because it fully dissociates into potassium ions and hydroxide ions. And in this case, to calculate it, it's a little bit more complicated because we do not know H3O+, plus, we just know OH-, minus, but we know that the product of these two must be equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14. And then we know that OH is going to be 1, to the, uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 3, which is the same as 0 0.001 plus 1 times 10 to the minus 7, which is what we had from just the dissociation of water, but, uh, and this is equal to this number. But we know that this is pretty small, so we're going to ignore it, because this is really, really big relative to this, and we don't need to be that accurate for this calculation. And now we have that this is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 11 and then the pH will be equal to minus the logarithm of 1 times 10 to the minus 11 which will be equal to 11. So you can see how basic pH values are greater than 7 and acid pH values are lower than 7. And if you can see here in just when we have only water the value for both of these is 7 and this is why the pH, a pH of 7 is a neutral pH, because the concentration of hydronium and hydroxide are the same. Hydronium is what makes water acidic and hydroxide is what makes water um, basic. So now let's talk a little bit about hydroponics and exactly what things we worry about when we're talking about hydroponic solutions. So in hydroponics we have two main things that affect the pH of a solution from just a purely chemical standpoint. We are not talking about the plants here, we are going to discuss the plants in, uh, the, in the following video. But here we're just going to talk about the water chemistry. And we have two things here that affect the pH of our solutions. We have phosphoric acid and the phosphoric acid species and carbonic acid and the carbonic acid species. And why am I talking about species? Because these things are what we refer to as weak acids. What does it mean to have a weak acid? Well, a strong acid is an acid that fully reacts with water to form hydronium and nitrate. But it can be the case that it's not this reaction does not proceed as strongly, but gets trapped in an equilibrium like it happens with water. So phosphoric acid goes through three different equilibriums that I'm going to write here. So it first reacts with water to form an equilibrium with H3O plus plus H2PO4 minus. It also then the H2PO4, which is what we call monobasic phosphate or um, dihydrogen phosphate reacts with H2O to create another H3O plus plus now HPO4 minus 2. And this one HPO4 minus 2 can also react with water 
to form H3O plus plus PO4 minus 3. Now, whenever you put any of these uh, phosphoric acid species in water, you get all of these in solution. So all of these are formed at some concentration whenever you put any of these in water. So in hydroponics, we generally add um, these. We add something like monopotassium phosphate. But whenever we do this, all of these are formed. And that's what we're going to talk about. Now, these reactions, analogous to, to water, also have equilibrium constants. And in this case, I'm going to write the p value of the equilibrium constant, which is just minus the logarithm of them, because that's easier to express. So the first reaction, pK1, is 2.14. The second one, pK2, is 7.2. And the third one, pK3, is equal to 12.37. Now, the important thing to understand is how these different species exist in solution as a function of the pH. So I'm going to write here uh, the concentration as a function of the pH. And what we have is that this is sort of what happens. Sorry. So what we have here is that, uh, just ignore these here, sorry. What you have here is that initially at a very low pH, we have a very high concentration of phosphoric acid. Then as the pH increases, this equilibrium moves and we get that more of this is generated which is this line here. This is H2PO4. So you can see these decreases and this one increases. And the point where they meet, where they are exactly the same, is pK1, which is the the, where the pH is equal to pK1, which is the value for the equilibrium constant. Now the same thing happens with H2PO4. As it goes down, as pH increases, it goes down in concentration and the concentration of HPO4 increases. And then finally the same thing happens to the phosphate which increases up until we're at the pK3 the concentration of HPO4-2 and PO4-3 is the same and then it increases until it reaches almost all of the, all the highest concentration in solution when the pH is really high. So, what happens here? In hydroponics, we usually prepare solutions that are between 5.5 5 and 6.5, which puts us within this region of pH. So, right before the pK2. This means that phosphorus in a hydroponic solution Uh, where the pH is between 5.5 5 and 6.5, we have that phosphorus is generally either it's in the form of both H2PO4 and HPO4-2. And this is very important because this is what is called a buffer. And why is this a buffer? Well, Think about what is required to change the pH. Since the pH is the concentration of hydronium ions, this value needs to change for the pH to change. However, what happens if we have equation 2 playing? Whenever we add an acid, we have this that can react with an acid to form H2PO4 and water. So when we add the acid, this which is a, acts as a base, reacts with the acid and forms this. So the pH never, the pH doesn't change because the acid reacted with this. Then if you add a base, then that base reacts with this acid that we have here present. And then this reacts with water to reform the acid that got taken away, the hydronium that got taken away. So whenever you add or remove hydroniums, the 
the, sol the solution will resist the change in pH because it has these substances that can react with both an acid or a base. And in this way, these two create a buffer for our hydroponic solutions in the form of these dihydrogen phosphate and hydrogen phosphate species. And this buffer is the strongest at 7.2, but it still exists in this region, as you can see here, that we have a significant concentration of both of these. Although it would be strongest at 7.2, it's not, it's not the case here. Now, we also have another equilibrium which is pretty important, which is the carbonic acid equilibrium. In, an, in, a, in the same way as we have the phosphoric acid being a weak acid, the carbonic acid reacts with water to form an equilibrium where it forms this H3O plus plus what we call bicarbonate. And then we have a second equilibrium where this bicarbonate reacts with water to form H3O plus plus now carbonate ions. And the pK of this first equilibrium is 3,6 and the pK of this second equilibrium is 6.3. Now this means that we form similar curves where we have here carbonic acid. Here this line is the hydrogen carbonate and then this line here is the carbonate. However, in this case the pK here, pK2, is 6.3, which puts it almost in the middle of the actual zone where we work with in hydroponics. So in hydroponics, if we're working between 5.5 five and 6.5, that means that this is almost, it's going to be almost at its strongest point where we'll have equal amounts of these and these in a hydroponic solution. And this means that this uh, carbonic acid buffer can actually be significantly um, of significant importance in a hydroponic solution. This is why when you prepare a solution with tap water and the tap water has a significant amount of carbonates, that solution will resist changes in pH significantly better than a hydroponic solution that is prepared and only has this uh, phosphoric acid in it. Now we also have an interesting twist to this equilibrium, which is that this is subjected to an additional equilibrium where CO2 is in equilibrium with carbonic acid. So this carbonic acid here is in equilibrium with CO2 in the atmosphere. At this pH, there is hardly any carbonic acid in solution at a pH of 6.3, but there is always some. And this is why if you prepare a solution that contains carbonates and you set the pH to 6.2, or 6.3, it will remain fairly unaffected for a slow period, small period of time. But if you, for example, bubble air into the solution, so if you have the solution sitting there and then you bubble air through it, then what you will do is that you will be taking away the CO2 that comes from this equilibrium and you will start getting rid of this acid, which however small will start shifting this equilibrium more towards uh, the basic side because you're getting rid of an acid. So this will mean that a solution prepared with tap water that is aerated or that is mixed will slowly tend to increase in pH even if you do nothing else just because of the displacement of this equilibrium towards the, towards the left because of you getting rid of the carbonic acid. So these are all the basics of the chemistry of the aqueous solutions in hydroponics. So we discussed what the basics of what pH is and very uh, briefly looked into the phosphoric acid and carbonic acid equilibria. And <clears throat> this will form the basis of understanding the chemistry of a hydroponic solution. On the next video, we will talk about uh, run to waste systems and how plants actually play a huge role in also determining how the pH changes and how these uh, equilibrium reactions also play a role there. So thank you very much for watching this video. Please remember to like and subscribe the video, uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel, of course. Uh, I'll see you on the next video. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.